A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not rise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you know the time. It is now the hour for you to wake from sleep. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is advanced. The day is at hand. Let us then throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as in the day, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in promiscuity and lust, not in rivalry and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. In those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. They did not know until the flood came and carried them all away. So will it be also at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be out in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and one will be left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on which day your Lord will come. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour of night when the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and not let his house be broken into. So too, you also must be prepared, for at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Following the light, as you can see by the cover of our worship aid, our theme for this year's Advent season is following the light. As Catholic Christians, we can interpret following the light as a time to prepare our minds and hearts for the birth of the Christ child on Christmas Day. This is a good thing but that term prepare can be a bit ambiguous. Today, I'd like to propose a simple means you and I can use to follow the light, 
that leads to Jesus. Many different lights. First, we need to acknowledge these weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas are very hectic for most, if not all of us. It's fair to say there are many different types of lights that are competing for our time. Some are very good lights, the lights of our churches as people go to various places of worship, the lights of our places of employment that allow us to enjoy a good standard of living, the lights of our homes that welcome family, friends, and strangers to join in holiday fellowship. Then there are some lights where we need to exercise caution. The lights of electronic media that soak up our time and we become blasé about the true meaning of this holy season. The lights of advertising that try to convince us we need to buy or receive a, multiple, a multitude of gifts to have a great Christmas and the lights of emails and voicemails that invite us to a multitude of events to the point of overload. Finally, there is the one true light, the light that shines far brighter than any other light. This is the light of the Advent season, the light that invites us to seek Jesus Christ, who is light itself. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah makes a clear connection between the mountain of the Lord and the light of the Lord. Isaiah said, In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. And then Isaiah offered this invitation, O house of Jacob, come. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. My friends, this Advent season beckons us to sort through the many lights that are an inevitable part of the next few weeks. We need to reduce the different lights and focus on what truly matters, the light of Jesus. Now to that formula, seeing the light when you and I are following the true light that is christ centers, we will have a tangible look about us. People will see and notice some important traits that we exhibit on an ongoing basis. They will see light in us. The best way for our light to shine through is something different than the 12 days of Christmas. It's the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. And those fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, perseverance, humility, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. So let's look at each one of those in just a little bit of detail and see how we can put them into practice this Advent. Love. Love is doing what is right in all situations because it is the right thing to do. It is rooted in the truth as defined by God, not subject to the whimsy of man's watered-down definition of love. Love is not tolerant of what is wrong. Rather, love upholds what is right by correcting the wrong. Love is always in union with God. Joy. Joy is a conscious decision rather than an emotion. Joy begins with the acknowledgement that it is great to be alive, that each day is a gift from God. As Christians, joy also permeates our attitude about the circumstances we encounter in life because we know Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Joy grows out of our faith in and love of God. Peace. Peace seeks to unite rather than divide, to bring together rather than separate. The devil brings division to the world. Christians do not. 
Working for peace requires us to put our own opinions and interests aside in order to bring proper order to our families, our communities, and our nation. Forgiveness is essential to achieve true peace. Patience. Patience seeks to understand, calls us to listen openly, and asks us to think critically about a Christian response to a given situation. When events in life don't transpire in the way we expect, we don't get out of sorts. God is always patient with us, so we must be patient with others and ourselves. Goodness. Goodness requires us to renounce what is evil and seek what is good. It requires us to build a life of virtue, not of vice. Goodness requires us to make prudent decisions, be righteous, and seek justice. Goodness challenges us to learn our Catholic faith so we can best respond to Jesus' commandment to love our neighbor. Kindness. Kindness makes us choose our words and actions carefully to leave the best possible impression on the person with whom we are interacting. In emotional circumstances, we exhibit kindness by remaining calm rather than responding with anger or escalating the situation. The easiest way to be kind is to have a genuine smile. Perseverance. Perseverance means we hang in there when the going gets tough. We seek to reach solutions to the roadblocks in life rather than throwing up our hands and giving up. To persevere, we must have the wisdom to seek out people we trust when we are struggling. To persevere means we go regularly to the sacrament of reconciliation. Humility. Humility helps us overcome our natural tendency to be self-centered. It is a time for self-reflection where we take an honest inventory of our relationship with God and neighbor. At no time does humility mean we demean ourselves or consider ourselves unworthy of God's love. Faithfulness. Faithfulness allows us to trust in God even when we don't think he is listening to our prayers or he is present in our lives. Faithfulness allows us to believe in what we cannot see, that God speaks to us personally through the words of sacred scripture, and that Jesus is present body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. Modesty. Modesty includes how we dress and how we act. We acknowledge our minds and bodies are a temple of the Lord and seek to reflect the goodness of God in appearance and deed. Modesty means we avoid participating in acceptable cultural norms that continue to emphasize anything goes. Self-control. Self-control is mastery over any tendency to overindulge. The world bombards our emotions to knee-jerk react and make decisions based on what we think will make us happy at a given moment in time. Self-control is the logical, well-thought-out process we use to make the best long-term decision. And chastity. Chastity is purity of thought and action. We honor our bodies, our sexuality, and our wedding vows. When we think chastely, it is easy for us to see the false lights that the world offers as sources of happiness, such as pornography and addictions of the flesh. Instead, we see those temptations as the dead ends that they are. So my friends, those are the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the good news is we don't have to start from scratch in terms of following the light. Those fruits of the Holy Spirit are God's gift to us by virtue of our baptism and confirmation. This Advent season, let's have the wisdom to sort through the glimmer and the shimmer of the various lights that cross our paths 
and allow the light of the Holy Spirit to come alive in each of us. When you and I become the lights we are called to be, others will follow. They too will find the light of Jesus Christ shining in their lives.